first half of section 9.6, translating conic sections. Now, all of these shapes that we've been graphing are conic sections, and the reason for that is if you were to take uh, a cone, or actually two inverted cones on top of each other, and to slice it in different ways, that's how you would get these different shapes that we have gotten. Um, and what we're going to do now is translate them, which means we're going to move them around. You thought this was too easy, right? Yeah. So it's not always, uh, it's not always the case that your center is right there at the origin, nice and neat. Um, just like we've, we've worked with before, we're going to use HK to indicate the vertex of either the parabola or the center of the other conics. So in our, uh, in our equations, we're going to have an HK to indicate that those important places. And what I have here is all of the standard forms of all of these equations. These are in your book. It would be wise of you to have these in your notes. Um, for a circle, you can see this h squared plus y squared equals r squared was the original that we did before, but now we're putting in the center. So h, uh, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals your radius squared. So there's the center of your circle here. The ellipse, the same thing. You're going to end up with um, x minus 8 instead of just x squared over a squared and y squared over b squared. We're going to put in this slide here. This hk is going to be the center of our ellipse. Um, and remember, whether the a is larger or the b is larger, that indicates whether your, um, whether your ellipse is elongated uh, up and down or left and right. All right, with a parabola, if you are, if you are, uh, if you're encircling, if you've got a horizontal axis, which means you're opening left or right, then your y is still squared. So y squared equals 4 times, remember this is the, the constant term uh, between the focus and the vertex, uh, times h, uh, x minus h. So there's your hk here. And then if you make the, vertic the axis vertical so that it's up or down, then you've got the x is squared and the y is not. But there's still your h and your k. Are, you can identify the h and the k because they're, they're going to be attached to your x and your y. On a hyperbola that we just did in the last section, same type of thing. The, uh, if the x is squared first, then you've got a horizontal axis, which means they're opening left and right. And if the y is, is first, then it's going to be a vertical axis, so it's going to open up and down. But here again, your h and your k, the h is always with the x. So let's first, let's see what we do with this. We are going to, we're going to graph x minus 5 quantity squared plus y minus 1 quantity squared equals 4. Step 1 is to figure out, well, what on earth shape is this going to be? And um, we can look to see we've got two squared terms, so it's not a parabola. You can rule that out. And um, we can see that um, if we, uh, we could divide it by, by 4. But in this case, we've got, if you look here, we've got a perfect square here. And so if we just put our center at 5, 1, so our center is 5, or sorry, negative 5, 1. On all of these, your h and your k are negative on every single one. On some of them, I remember some, some of the things that we did, sometimes it's negative and sometimes on all of these conics, your h and your k are negative. So whatever the symbol is, it's going to be the opposite. So in this case, the center is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 left, 1 up. There's your center. And now you've got this is the radius, so the radius is 2 squared in your, this looks exactly like one of these formulas right here. So we've got 2, 2 down would be right here, 2 to the right would be right here, 2 up would be right here, and 2 to the left would be right here. And so you just graph your circle just like that. So with, with the circle, find your center. And then your radius is going to be from the center of your circle, not from the origin. Okay? Easy sneezy? Got that one. Okay. Let's do, let's graph this. Let's see what this looks like. We've got a squared term over something minus a squared term over something. So if you're subtracting two squared terms, that's easy. That's a hyperbola, right? 
you've got your subtraction here and you've got two squared terms. Um, the only one that's going to be tricky is to figure out is it a circle or is it an ellipse? All right, those, those are the only ones that are going to be tricky because the parabola has one squared term um, and the hyperbola is subtracting your squared terms. So we've got a hyperbola here, we know, and we know we're going to have, so what we're going to do is this. I should have given myself a graph. I always do this. All right, so we need a graph. And the center is going to be, the center is going to be negative 2, 1. All right, so here we're going to go negative 2, 1, and there's your center. Once you find your center, everything else goes from that point. So we've got, this is the x term, and 9 is 3 squared, and 16 is 4 squared. So we're going to go to the right and to the left, three places from the center, not from the origin. So from the center, oh dear, and I should have, this is 2. All right. And do, okay, I should have done that well before. Okay, so from the center of your hyperbola, you're going to go three to the right, one, two, three here, and three to your left, one, two, three here. And then you're going to go up and down, because that's the y, up and down four. So one, two, three, four, so there's one spot here, and from here you're going to go down one, two, three, four, so down to here. Now remember with a hyperbola, this is your imaginary box, do, 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 do. and then you've got your crisscross makes your asymptotes, and now because the x is, uh, because the x is first, you've got a horizontal axis of symmetry, which means your graph is going to start at these vertices here, and they're going to go around like this. So when you're graphing on all of these, it's exactly the same as we graphed them before. The only trick is, instead of just starting at the center, you first find your HK and establish that center, okay? Instead of using the origin, establish that center and count the number of, um, the number of units to the left and right and up and down instead of just using the numbers on your original graph. Easy enough? Okay, so that's graphing. I think you can do that. The other type of problem that you will have is um, I will give you parts and pieces and you will need to write an equation for these different, uh, for these different conics. So I'm going to see if I can do this down below. So I'm going to write an equation of a parabola with a vertex of 4, negative 2, and a focus of 4, 1. So I'm going to use the, the, the um, equation for the parabola, so I'm going to use one of these. Now what you're going to need to do is kind of figure out, okay, well, which one do I use? Is it horizontal or is it vertical? So what I kind of do is, well, plot the points that you've got and see what, what your graph would look like. Just do a rough, a quick rough one. So 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 2. So that's going to be your vertex. And if your focus is 4, 1, if your focus is here, remember your focus and your vertex are on the, uh, on the line of axis, your axis of symmetry. So it's going to open this way. It's going to open up and down, which means it's got a vertical axis. And if it's got a vertical axis, we're going to use this format. So what I would do is start out with what you know. You know h minus something squared equals 4 times something and then times y minus something. All right? It's really simple. So just first find your skeleton. And now let's find out, okay, well, we know that the vertex is 4, negative 2. So we're going to put uh, your h and your k for 4, or your h is your x, so 4, and negative 2. And remember, minus a negative is a plus 2. So now the only other part we need is this p. And do you remember what the p stands for? Do you remember that p is the distance between the vertex and the focus? So we have the vertex here and the focus here. So the vertex was 4, negative 2, and the focus is 4, 1. So to get from here to here, I have to go 1, 2, 3 up. So my, my P must be 3. So my final 
my final equation is going to be x minus 4 squared equals 12, y plus 2, and you're finished. That's all. All right? So let's do the same type of thing. If you think you've got it, then move ahead and see if you can do it faster than I can. An ellipse now, we're going to write one more equation. The equation of ellipse with foci at 3, 5, and 3, negative 1, and covertices of 1, 2, and 5, 2. Do you remember what the covertices are? Do you remember that an ellipse is um, an elongated shape, and so the vertices are on the long direction, and the covertices are the vertexes, the vertices on the short direction, if you remember that. So, in this case, let's... So you're going to use an ellipse, so we want this skeleton. So let's put the skeleton down here. So x minus something squared over something squared plus y minus something squared over something squared equals 1. All right. So we don't have the center, so we can't just quick and easily put that in, but we could figure it out. So let's see. Remember that the covertices are going to be, actually both of these, if you find the midpoint between either of these two points, either of these two sets, you're going to find the center because the, uh, the foci and the covertices are both equal distance from the center. So you can find, oh, whichever one you wish. So let's find the center between the covertices. So remember you do that, you add your x's. So um, let's see. So uh, 1 plus 5 divided by 2 is going to be your x, and 2 plus 2 divided by 2 is going to be your y. Do you remember you add your x's and divide by 2 and add your y's and divide by 2? So 5, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 2 plus 2 is 4 divided by 2 is 2. So my center is 3, 2. So just put in x minus 3, y minus 2, easy sneezy. So now we need the distances from that center to the different parts. And now what we found is this. You've got to decide, okay, is this ellipse, is this going to be longer um, north, uh, up and down or longer east and west? <laughs> and so because we know that our foci are um, our equal distance here, let's see, because our foci are 3, 5 and 3, negative 1, our foci are on a, horizontal, or a, a vertical line we know that that's going to be, the longer distance is going to be my y, and we know that the shorter distance is the covertices, and so that's what, 1, 2, that's right here, and 5, 2 is right here. So this shorter distance is the x. So we can look to see, well, how far from the center are those covertices, and that's going to be my x, and then we can, from that, figure out uh, figure out the um, the b squared. So we've got, uh, let's see, where are we? Oh boy. So we've got from the center, which is 3, 2, and you can either draw it, sometimes it's easier to actually draw and just count them. Um, so if we've got, if we've got a center at 3, 2, and, um, and then we're going to go, the covertices are 5, 2, so there's 2 in between there to go from 3 to 5, there's 2 from the center to the edge, so that's going to be your 2 squared, which is, you can either put the 2 squared or you can just put 4 there. Okay, so now we've got to figure out, we've got the distance to the foci, we need to, the distance all the way to the vertices, and if you'll remember, that's that distance of uh, the c squared equals a squared minus b squared. I'm trying to see, I may have to move you down a little bit so that you can see it. Okay, last little bit, here we go. So to find that, what we're going to do is, we've got to take the c squared equals a squared minus b squared, and this is where it gets tricky, you know, which one is bigger, which one, so this needs to be our bigger number, so it's actually the a this time. So we're going to put in the c is the distance from the center of the ellipse to the focus. So we've got a distance of between 5 and negative 1 is 6, so the difference to the center is 3. Do you see how I got that? So from, from, um, from 3 over and 5 up and 3 over and negative 1, 
that's a distance of 6. So the difference between the center of your ellipse and the top of the ellipse is 3. So this is going to be, so this C is going to be 3 squared or 9. And then what we want is A, hey, let's just do this. Let's add plus B squared. And the B squared we said was 4, and that's going to give us the big one, which is A squared, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 is what goes here. All right? Easy enough, sort of, kind of. If you need to go back and watch where the parts came from again, you can sure do that. And um, so what you'll do is you'll do, I only did two of each type. So there's four different types of conics, and we graphed two, and, um, and we came up with equations for two. But you'll need to be able to graph all four and come up with equations for all four. So if you get caught, make sure to ask me in class, and I'll see you next time.